Welcome to our lecture online and here's another example of how to find a stable matrix when you have an absorbing Markov chain. You can tell you have an absorbing Markov chain is because for the states A and B, notice that you have all of the um, all of the population of state A remaining with state A and none of them going to B, C or D. In the same token you have the population of B, all of it staying with B and none of it going to A, C or D. So that is a good indicator that you have an absorbing Markov chain. So what does the stable matrix look like? Well we have a situation like this, you want to be able to subdivide the matrix in such a way that you separate the portion of the matrix, we have the ones here, and so that becomes the identity matrix. This is the S matrix, the R matrix, and the zero matrix. So in other words, in this case, we have the transition matrix looking like this. We have the I, the S, the zero, and the R portion of the matrix, and in themselves, they're really matrices as well. And then we know that the stable matrix can be found, the stable matrix can be found by saying that this will be the I matrix, this will become zero, this will become zero, and this portion up here that used to be S is now going to be S times I minus R quantity to the negative one, in other words, the inverse of I minus R multiplied times S like that. Okay, so to find the stable matrix, we first have to take I, the identity matrix, and subtract the R matrix from that. So we have I, minus R is going to be equal to 1, 1, 0, 0, minus the R matrix, which is this matrix right here, like that, so 0 0.5, 0 0.2, uh, 0 0.1, and 0 0.4, and when we subtract the two, we get the following. We get 1 minus 0 0.5 is 0 0.5, 0 minus that is minus 0 0.8, 0 minus that is minus 0 0.8. Oh, not 0 0.8, what am I doing? My arithmetic is all off. 0 minus that is minus 0 0.2, 0 minus that is minus 0 0.1, and 1 minus that is 0 0.6. Sometimes the brain plays strange tricks on you. Okay, so now we have I minus R. Now we're supposed to take the inverse of that. So what is the inverse of I minus R? Well, that's equal to 1 over the determinant times these two elements switched around and those two elements changed signs. All right, and of course the determinant can be found. The determinant of this matrix is going to be equal to the multiplication of these two, so it would be 0 0.5 times 0 0.6 minus the multiplication of those two, which is minus 0 0.2 times minus 0 0.1. So in this case, that would be equal to 0 0.3 minus 0 0.02, which is equal to 0 0.28. So the determinant in this case is 1, well, the determinant is 0 0.28, and 1 divided by that will be 1 divided by 0 0.28. So this will be 1 divided by 0 0.28 times these elements exchange position, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, and those elements will have the sign change 0 0.1 and 0 0.2. So that is now the inverse of I minus R. Now finally, we're going to multiply that times by the S matrix. The S matrix is this matrix up here. So S times 1, the identity matrix minus R, take the inverse, is going to be equal to, and it's okay to move the 1 over D out. So we can say, well, this is going to be equal to 1 over 0 0.28 times the S matrix, which is going to be 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, multiply times the inverse portion of that matrix right here. So it would be 0 0.6, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.5. And notice that we still have the 1 over 0 0.2a over there. Now, what does that become? So we probably need a, well, maybe not. So do we need a calculator? So that's 1 over 0 0.28 times. So 0 0.2 times 0 0.6 is 0 0.12, 0 0.3 point that would be 0 0.15, 0 0.15. So I'm multiplying this times this plus this times this to get that. Okay, next we multiply this times this, that's 0 0.04 times this, 0 0.15, that's 0 0.19. Okay, next we multiply, multiply this times this, that's 0 0.12, and this times this is 0.01, that's 0 0.13. And finally we multiply this, this times this, that would be 0.04, this times this is 0.05, that's 0.09. Okay, 
So that will be, <clears throat> that is the result of multiplying S times this. A quick check to make sure I did it right. 0 0.12, 0 0.8, that's correct. 0 0.04, 0 0.15, that's correct. Uh, here, that would be 0.12, that was correct. 0.04, that's correct. So that all looks good. Now, what I'm going to do now is multiply this times this to get the matrix. So this is going to be equal to, now for that we need a calculator. So we have 0.15 divided by 0.28 equals, that would be 0 0.536, 536. And this multiply times that, so 0.19 divided by 0.28 equals 0 0.679, 679. Then multiply this times this, so 0 0.13 times divided by 0.28 equals 0 0.464, 0 0.464, and finally multiply this times this, 0 0.09 divided by 0.28 equals, and it would be 321, 0 0.321. Now, this is a quick check to make sure you did this correctly. Do the columns add up to one? And indeed, this adds up to one, that adds up to one. So, so far, it's looking good. So this will now go into the stable matrix in that corner right there. So the stable matrix can now be written as follows. In the upper left corner, we have the identity matrix. So that's that. In the lower corner, we have zeros. In the lower right corner, we have zeros. And in this corner, we have 0 0.536. 0 0.679, 0 0.464, and 0 0.321. I may want to rearrange these a little bit so that they're not so much out of whack. So 0, 0, 0, 0. And there is the stable transition matrix, which means that there's a certain probability that one state will get all the customers, a certain probability that the other state will get all the customers. So for example, if this is state A, B, C, and D, and this is A, B, C, and D. Notice that uh, this is from, and this is to. So in summary, starting out with this matrix right here, knowing that this is going to be an absorbing Markov chain. But notice, not just one of the states is going to end up with all of the population. There's two states that will end up with the population and two states that will end up with no population at all. Notice that when we finally get to the stable matrix, so we have from C to C it's zero, from D to D is zero, so there's no transition of population between C and D at all, that's all zero. The only transition of population will simply be between A and B, so that A and B will end up with the total population in a particular ratio. And that's then the end result of an absorber Markov chain with two of the states ending up with a population and two of the states ending up with zero population. And that's how it's done.